everybody, I'm Joey. And I'm Alex. And today I'm excited about this review because we are reaching into my childhood. Aww. I know. Reminiscing. I know. And this is now just right on that. <laughs> Go ahead, jump. <laughs> Barely know what they're looking at. Mega Man Adventures. Woo. Now, I will say... Um, the big box. Yeah, the big, the big box. <laughs> the big box. So, Mega Man Adventures. Mm. You probably never played Mega Man. I never did. Because you were kind of born an adult. <laughs> yes. So, um, I... <laughs> I played, um, <laughs> Mega Man wasn't my favorite uh -huh. growing up. I mean, I liked Contra, I liked all these other ones, Castlevania. So I didn't even know this was a video game because I had no, I just thought this was a character created for a board game. Up until this point right now? Yes, up until this point, I had no idea because I didn't play video games. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't make any sense. I know. I know. Okay. So, spoiler alert, this was based on a video game. Okay. So, you have two completely different points of view. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at this just as a board game. I had, I was like, I really like the artwork. I like that, like, pixely, 8-bit kind of style. Hurts. <laughs> I'm Hurts. sorry. Okay. Okay. So anyway, right. yeah. um, everything that goes through these old video game things, the majority of them I've been disappointed with. And I'll just be honest with you because a lot of times they lean too much into nostalgia and not enough into gameplay. Mm -hmm. And so this one by Blacklist Games, I was pretty excited to try to see if that trend is broken, mm -hmm. to see if they are going to do something different. I mean, Boss Monster was great. It was fine. It ran its course for me. I don't think I, we still have it. But um, it's... Mega Man Adventures, I was excited to see because I know there's a single game and a campaign style mm -hmm. game. But anyway, before we get into exactly what we thought about it, let's see how it plays. Let's do that. You really didn't know. I did. I had no idea. Okay, so we are set up now for Mega Man Adventures. We are set up for a four player game here. I'm going to give a quick overview. I'm not going to go through all the rules, but just to give you an idea of how the game plays. Uh, first off, um, I do love the box. It comes with their compartments for everything, and also these are fantastic. So all of these for every character, so the cards and everything will go inside, so it's very easy to just grab and play. That is really nice. And speaking of the characters, these little acrylic standees, I just love the way they look. Each one has their own. So, all right, so first off, we're set up for four players. These guys are already set up to start their turn, but I'll go through exactly what happens. You're got, you've got your character sheet here. This shows you at five health, and then these right here will be able to icons you can use to go through the stages later. Every character has four stage cards and a boss card in front, and the boss card is going to give a special requirement to get through each of those stages. So everyone's going to be playing their own game of Mega Man, but you do have a layer of player interaction. First off, we're going to have to choose a weapon, and through all of these weapon cards right here, this will be my weapon, Hard Knuckle. So it's going to cost me one of the jumping guys, and then I will get a red die to shoot, and then I will be able to activate my yellow running one right here. So I would flip this over to show I can then use that. So this goes right here, and it starts off with a charge of three. All right, so... Player aids are right here. Draw phase, planning phase, action phase, cleanup phase. First off, everyone's going to grab four cards. Three, four. Look at them. And then you decide there's a top and a bottom. For the top, what we're going to do is we can put them up here. These are going to make your dice pool. But also, anything you put into right support, this player is going to get. Anything in left support, they're going to get. So if I take a look at my player to my right and my left, you'll see right here, I'm already going to get a red die, and I'm already going to get a red die right here. So, tell you what I'm going to do is, this was not a good draw at all, let's switch these out here. All right, so, what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to go ahead and place this yellow one here, and I'm going to place a blue one here, okay? And I've got these two cards left. One of these is going to go into my skill, and on my skill, I will use the bottom right here, which means I can give up any die, and I can gain a health and another charge for my weapon. So I'm going to place that here, just like this, and this stays in my hand for a boost. So let's go through how it works. So 
That's the draw phase, the planning phase. You can talk to everybody and say, what die do you need? So you can kind of plan out where you're going. So now I know the die I, I am going to get. And it does come with these Mega Man die. I am a sucker for die, I'll tell you that. So we're going to grab a yellow, a blue, and two reds. Okay. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to complete this first stage. All right, I've got to complete every single area of this stage. If I don't complete it fully, I get hit with one here, three here, or two here. So I've got to complete as many of the, as these as I can. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to roll. Now keep in mind my stage here, Bomb Man, if two or more die show up with the one jumping guy, I will suffer a damage. So I'm going to roll it. There we go. Okay. So I didn't get two, two jumping guys, which is fine. I am going to take this. I have this, then just beat this first level here because right here I need a shooting. I drop the shoot there. I do get a reward. The rewards are right here. Take it, flip it over. What is it? Ah, nice. I can then activate this. So I've got a shoot ready to be used. So next I need two jumps and a run. I have a jump and a run, but I don't want to uh, tell you what I can do. I can use one of these weapons, the charges, to reroll my die. I'll just reroll this one. Whew. Nope, that's two shoots. So tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the three hits. Normally you wouldn't do this. So I'll just show you what happens. One, two, three. So I'm not using these die here, but I am taking these three hits. Boom, and I'm going to the next stage. So you're gonna notice this hourglass right here. This hourglass just means doubles of anything needs to activate. So I'm gonna use this for the doubles, and then I'm going to use this one to be the final shooting. And flip that, activate it, and there we go. I've made it through that entire stage. Now, I could have used this card in my hand as a boost. At any time, for any player, I can put it out and say, you now have an extra red die. All right, I didn't use it for myself. I can help another player by doing that later. So that's what happens. You go through just like this, and you're going to go through each of these stage cards. Now, the weapon I did not use this time. The weapon, you can take a jump like I said, and then get these two abilities here. And the skill, get rid of a die, to gain these abilities. So everyone is gonna go through that, and you're gonna go through all four of your stage cards, and then at the end, you're all gonna fight the boss. You flip this over, and here it shows the boss. Overcome, each pattern gains a hit, so it's, he's gonna hit a lot harder. Now this skull right here, means that when the skull shows up, it counts as a run. And there are also weapons that he is weaker about. It shows that up in the corner. So what happens, you turn the bombing over, and then you've got these boss patterns. And the bomb man shows he gets four of these boss pattern cards. Shuffle them up, and four. So everyone's going to fight the boss at the same time. So you place these, and then you have to beat these all in one turn. As opposed to last time, it was one card per turn. This one, you've got to beat all of them in one turn. So for the first one, you're going to need two runs, or you take two hits. Then you're going to need a run and a skull, whatever it is. And in this case, it is a run. All right, so you're going to have to beat all four of these to finally beat the last one. And these right here, energy tokens, are pretty much extra lives. So if you die, you can take one of those. There's a pool in the middle for everyone. You take one of those, then you recharge and you start again. And that's pretty much the game. A couple of the things it does come with is there are campaign options here. And the campaigns are, you can do the Wily Bossies at the very end, the final one in the campaign. And also, it comes with a lot of boss cards. A lot of boss cards. All with the great art. And finally, if you do a two-player game, because two-player, you obviously won't have somebody to your right and left, it's going to give this Dr. Light. 
and you're going to put these next to you and it'll kind of tell you what die you can get to add to your pool. So you're going to select two of those. And if the game's not hard enough, you do have sabotage cards. Sabotage are going to make the game more difficult. We did not find those necessary. We thought the game was as hard as really we wanted. So that's pretty much, in the nutshell, how you play Mega Man Adventures. So let's see what we thought about it. Okay, so that is pretty much, in a nutshell, how you play Mega Man Adventures. Let's talk about the kapo the kapo the components. <laughs> okay, yes, but, um, the components. The there components. There we go. I like the cards, the boards. I like yep. the little player icon. The dice look great. All of those things look really good. But you missed the best part. Which one? The acrylic standees. I do really like those acrylic standees. They do fall down every now and then. No biggie. You just have to stick them back up. But yeah, this, I, they do look really good. Please make this a thing in mm. board games. You know, there's something about those acrylic standees. Yes. I love minis, but man, those yeah. acrylic standees are so nice. And they pack flat. They do. I mean, you could put so many of them in a box. I mean, it's just, come mm -hmm. on, those look mm -hmm. so good. Yep. And they look like shrinky dinks. They do, don't they? Yeah. So yeah. anyway, mm. so the whole the whole like um, presentation of this yes. is great. Mm -hmm. And okay, so what do you think gameplay wise? Game. So my biggest gripe about this game is not really gripe. It's really not that big. Of a, it's just every time I'm playing a, a round, there's just I can never have enough dice. Right. Right. Which is part of the strategy to it because yep. you have to you know, defeat all those boss using your dice. So are you going to use your bonus? Are you going to use the little extra tokens at the top? How are you going to do it? That's the thing. But my biggest thing is I just felt like there was never an, I always wanted one more dice every round. Just one more dice. Then I could use all my dice and I could use all my bonuses and then I'd be fine. And then I wouldn't have to be attacked. Yeah. And I, I like that too, mm -hmm. because it is there. It, there's a lot of randomness, not yes. only because of the die, yes, but also because of the cards you pull will show you the die that you can get. Yes. And a lot of that, now Now there is dice mitigation and there's also maybe more of a game mitigation because there's so much that goes into this. You can mitigate the die that you're gonna use by the cards in your hand. Yep. But then you can also talk to people on the table and say, look, I really need a yellow die. Yes. Anybody over here, could you give me one? And they're like, yeah, let me do that. Yeah. And that type of play interaction is really fun. I do, I did really like how that planning phase about that, you could do that. You know, oh, all right, I have no red dice, but you, do you have a red dice? That was good. I did like that a lot. I did too, and that's, yes. it. I really liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, the game itself is hard. Yes. It is, you're going to die, you're gonna hopefully save those energies or the, uh, I guess they call it the extra lives until the last boss because it's going to be hard. You're going to take hits throughout there because you just yes. can't, you can't get all those things done. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. uh, now the player interaction is one thing that you do lean into this, but the boost card, you having that boost card that you're, you're able to play on different people's turns. Yes is great. I do love that because it also helps a benefit that I might not need, but you might need later. Yes, I did like that too. And you can either save it for yourself or give it to the next person. I did, the player interaction in, in this game is good. Like it it, is. it's a nice player interaction. You, you, yes, you're doing your own thing on your turn, but you are referring to the other player to see if they have this or if something can happen. It is good. And the one thing is I would say four gets a little bit too long on this. And there's yes. only one reason why is because there's too much downtime mm -hmm. as you go around the turn everybody has to run their actions through yes this game could be played concurrently yes if it wasn't for the boost cards yes so one thing is as we play this game more we've kind of house ruled it in the fact that we can all play at the same time if you played before and then you yeah. just yell out hey i need a boost i need whatever yeah because that is it's it's a long time seeing everybody go through those phases yes but at two and three, you don't see it as much. And there's, it's a lot of fun moving your figure through that stage yeah. to the next one, through mm -hmm. the next stage, and you keep going through. And then you're like, you're going to take a hit, but maybe you want to take a hit here because then you get a token here. So you're going to take it and it's back and forth. You use your energy now or later. I like that a lot. Me too. I do really enjoy that a lot. It, this was I. This was a fun game. I I enjoyed playing it. 
it was fun. Like I said, I knew nothing else that it was based on an actual video game. Which so, is which says something. Yeah. She enjoyed the game. I en really did enjoy this game. I enjoyed like the the planning phase of it. The actual dice phase of it was really fun right. too. I, and I, then I also like you know the final phase of the boss. That is always that was fun too. I it's did. Stressful. It is stressful, but it's fun. I did. I really did enjoy that. Now, when yeah. I say the campaign, which we did not go into with this, no, the campaign is not really a campaign. If you're thinking like a legacy style mm -hmm. game or Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven type thing, a campaign is probably what I would almost consider a full game. Yeah, it'll probably take you two hours to go through the whole campaign. Yeah, so you're going to go through your bosses, then you're going to finally have the final boss. So it's. The campaign is a full game, which I honestly kind of like the fact that you could just have this hit the table and play it quickly. Yeah, only one can, night. Yeah, mm -hmm. or you can just ha have the play the entire thing. Yeah. So that's the style of campaign game that's in this is pretty much just a full game of it, but they yeah. just call it the campaign. Um, and there's a lot of variability with the stages, the bosses, the boss patterns, everything different. Yes. So, all right. So what, and first of all, I love side scrollers. Side scrolling video games. Those are my favorite kind. I know the big thing now is first person shooters, but this side scrolling, it just gives you that feel of moving yeah, over. Yeah. That nostalgia is there, but also. And a I lot do of like nice. the little steady. Do, 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 yeah, do. Yep. It's very mm -hmm. nice. So, okay, all right. Yes. What did you think of it? I, so I like this game. I would give it a six. A six? Mm -hmm. All right. I would actually go to seven. Okay. You know, and I would honestly probably raise it to 7.5 if they could eliminate that downtime mm -hmm. and find a way for everyone to play at the same time. Yeah. Because I do like this game. It comes out quick. It's played quick. It's fun. Mm -hmm. The artwork is great. I mean, if you've played Mega Man, <laughs> you're going to love this style of game. Yeah. It's just, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So very unforgiving, but I like it. Oh, it's very unforgiving. So it's yes. approved. I like mm -hmm. it. Give it a try if yes. you've played Mega Man or if you even don't. Know who he is. <laughs> I didn't know he was a thing. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.